And it's time to welcome back to Flow. It's great to be chatting to her again. We have got Anita Spring. Anita, how are you today? I'm very well. How are you going, Clayton? Doing fantastic, doing fantastic. Um, I'm Excellent. Lo- I'm loving your new song. Thank um, you. It's called Midnight Train, and I'm, I have to confess that when I saw Midnight Train, there was two other words that instantly in my brain because it's ingrained, and it was to Georgia. Of and course. So, I, mean, I, I couldn't help it, and it was just there. And so I'm, my initial thought was, I wonder if this will be a bit like that. No, no nothing like that. No, <laughs> nothing at all. In fact, it, and I mean, I love that song. I, I grew up hearing that song. So and and it, it's, a, it's a classic in that. And the, the thing that got me about it and why I remember the song is the, the brilliant voice of Gladys Knight. Yes. And when I hear your song called Midnight Train, I'm hearing your brilliant voice as well. And I'm sure someone's going to have a similar sort of reaction that I had in the years to come. So there you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that um, was done completely on purpose because uh, I, I, what I'm trying to do when I write my lyrics these days is pay tribute in some way to the amazing artists of our past. Because, uh, you know, I grew up with mum and dad listening to um, Gladys Knight and, you know, the Eagles and yeah. just a whole range of amazing music that um, I, you know, I want to show my respect because they're, they're all legendary artists. Um, and so that's my little trick these days is to add a reference to something like there's another lyric in the song that um, references the blues as well. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I just... Um, I actually got that little trick when I was in um, Nashville and I was listening to another artist do their thing and I was like, oh, that's really clever, the way that they just did that with their lyrics. And so I came home trying to do that myself. Well, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to borrow from someone else. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's only when <laughs> yeah. lawyers get involved that you get into trouble, but uh, until then, no, you go for it. <laughs> I, I actually, I was Googling that just the other day going, oh, can I use the same title as someone else's song? In my, Like as, you know, um, for example, um, Say a Johnny Cash song, yeah. uh, can I? And apparently you can if it's quite generic, but if it's something like Walk the Line, which is very specific, then yep. negative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get into a bit of trouble, and that's why you can get into a little bit yeah. of strife. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, you just mentioned Johnny Cash. Is he someone that uh, you you might reference and put into one of your future songs? Absolutely, I've I've already done that actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in, uh, in this next, um, actually, not the next single that's coming out. It's the one after um, yeah. that's coming out, and yeah, I just he just blows my mind. Uh, I went to the Johnny Cash Museum when I was in Nashville. Um, okay. a very touristy thing to do, but I was just gobsmacked with how many hit records he had over yeah. decades and decades and decades. Um, like what just an incredible journey <laughs> he had. And obviously well, when I saw the movie Walk the Line with um, June Carter and his story with that, uh, how the two of them met and their relationship, um, didn't even touch on his success as an artist in my opinion. Yeah. Like it, just yeah. walking through that museum, I was just, yeah, really, it was really in- interesting and um, yeah, I was blown away. And it's also the influence that he's had on, on so on, many artists, yeah, yeah. And, and and across genres too, not just in country, but you can often hear a, you know a rock artist talk about you know they've got a favourite Johnny Cash album, and yeah, uh, and there exactly. was only someone I saw recently that said that uh, live at Folsom Prison they heard that and that was they they they're still one of their most favourite albums, and you look at them and you think, but you're a heavy metal guitarist. This, where did where did this come from? But that's the influence that Johnny Cash had, and that's yep. and then near yeah, and it just it's it's I guess. Um, we, we say, you know, he's one of the greats of the industry, but I, I prefer to look at that he's one of the immortals of the industry. I agree, yeah, 100% with that. Like, he, he, re- he really is. And, and he's so individual as well. And, he, they, you know, you hear people talk about, you know, artists that are developing and all that kind of, and they always say, just stay true to yourself and stay yeah. true to yourself as an artist. Um, and he was just all about that wasn't he like yeah. it, th- there was no one that really you, you can't compare him to anyone no not at all and I, even though uh, some of his, his last songs he, he's got a very croaky voice he still sounds so good it's he just, does he does he's got such he a does. rich voice doesn't he he does yeah 
Now, so, I need, so good. I need, I need to segue into something different. I need to ask you about this because um, when we last time we spoke last year and then doing some research after we'd had a chat and finding out how you were a backing singer for other artists and all that. Now, there was, there's a Netflix doco. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called 20 Feet from Stardom, and it's all about backup yes, singers. I have. And, I have seen that. Oh, good, good, because that gets to my, my question I want to ask is that – one of the things that it came out of that documentary was the lack in modern music of the backup singer. And it's something that uh, I've had conversations with with friends about music and, and others in this industry. And we all sort of agree because we grew up listening to the, the greats having the backup singers. And now it's almost like you know, it's unheard of. You just you don't, don't do it. It's, it's almost like it's bad. You don't, it's one of those negative things. But it's actually, it makes a song. So as a former backup singer... What are your? How do you feel about it? And now that you're actually, well, you're 20 feet in front now. So, how does it all feel for you? Yeah, I I love um, backing vocals. I, I, I'm just and I love singing them, and I love having them support me as an artist out the front. I, I feel like it makes the song, yep. uh, and it makes it, and it also creates a, an energy on stage that you know the band does their thing, and then you've got this amazing backing vocal section if you're lucky uh, of two or three people that you know can move and with you and when you're on stage as a singer and if there's no other singers on stage it's really hard to have that you can have the rapport with the band but to have that uh, energy when you're actually singing a song with someone else singing it with you there's it's it's a real magic about it yeah. and um i yeah it, it, obviously it all comes down to budget if you're touring and if you can afford those things but i would always spend my money on vocals yeah. um and you know build everything else up around it because yeah it, it just it adds so much to a live performance and i still sing backing vocals to to this day it's it, there's a real art to um good BVs, as you know, yeah. we, we call it, <laughs> um, and and that um, dynamic and the um, the what's my word for it? You know, when you're blending yeah. with your other vocalists, there's a real art to it, and so good backing vocals, nothing really beats it. it you can, yeah, it's on. magic to yeah. the ears. It is. Well, it's a doco. It's called Twenty Feet from Stardom. If anyone hasn't seen it, they want to see it. It is amazing. It, it, it is. I, I just loved it, and it, it, it highlighted to me about some of my favourite songs that I didn't realise all the backing vocalists that were on it. So it opened my eyes to it. But yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. So thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. Oh, absolutely. I'm um, yeah, all for all, all four BVs. Bring them on. <laughs> well, it's good to hear. Now, I've watched your video for your new song, Midnight Train, yeah. and uh, I just need to know, is the, the very beautiful young lady at the end, is she any relation by any chance? <laughs> That's my gorgeous daughter. Yeah. She just turned seven a couple of weeks oh, ago. Wow. Uh, Congrats, and yeah. She, she appears right at the end of that yeah. um, video coming through the door, and, um, yeah, she is the apple of my eye. She's, you know, where she's joined at my hip. Pretty yeah. much. So besides, you know, when she's at school, she's at school. But otherwise, we're, we're two peas in a pod. And she wanted to be in the video. Um, it was her idea. Yeah. I said, yeah, absolutely you can. So then I, um, I thought about, because um, I filmed a couple of videos that day, and then I actually made her a feature in one of my upcoming songs as oh, well. Okay. So she's, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was lovely, actually, because I got to you know, create the costumes and things for her. And um, it was a really lovely day of filming, actually, because she was involved. Yeah, well, that's good. And I loved, when I saw the end of it, it was like, oh, and I, I just had to ask. I thought that was the yeah, case, but I just had to puppet. ask. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what does uh, your daughter think about your career? Is she go, you know, my mum's the country star? I mean, what's her she's attitude really to it all? really proud, actually, yeah. yeah. She's really, really proud of what I do. And um, when, when I go away on tours and things like that, uh, she doesn't enjoy that too much. <laughs> yeah. for, for, you know, because normally I'm here with, for her 24 hours a day. So um, that can be um, challenging. But she does come on the road with me every now and then because lots of my tours fall in school holidays. Um, so um, that's the only side of it that's really tough on her and me. Um, but, you know, it has to be done because um, I love touring. And yeah. um, so she's just getting used to that now. But, yeah, she's super proud, super proud. <laughs> Good. Uh, and is she showing any sort of mu musical talents, you know? Is the acorn form fairly close to the tree? So what's going oh on? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, absolutely. She's... Uh -huh. um, 
learning piano and she can sing uh, like a dream and now she's doing musical theatre um, and uh, speech and drama and uh, dancing so she's doing a whole oh, yeah. you know range of creative things um, that keeps her busy and she loves all of it and yeah she, she's just um, she's a, a little performer who knows what she's going to be you know and whether she will pursue any of it but she's got the DNA in spades <laughs> Well, that's good to hear. So who knows, might we'll be chatting to her one day as well. <laughs> who knows? I know. I, I, I'm not going to be a, you know, I won't be releasing her singing out as, like a, as a mini yeah. Justin Bieber or anything like that. I don't, um, yeah, understand <laughs> I don't that, think yeah. that's a good yeah. idea. No. But, you know, when she's old enough to, you know, think about what she wants to do, then I'll fully support her and whatever yeah. that may be, yeah. I understand you're doing a tribute show to Olivia Newton-John. Can you tell us yes. about that? Um, I feel so privileged and lucky to have been asked to do this because I've, I've, I've always just loved Olivia. I think she, as an artist and as a mum and as a person, she is just an absolute legend. Well, she, she's an icon, that's yep. what the, the show's called. Um, so uh, we are doing a whole string of shows. We did our first one a couple of weeks ago uh, in Tweet Heads. And we're doing shows all over New South Wales, all down the coast, um, out to Bathurst, out to Dubbo. And we've got a couple of shows in Melbourne and um, it will roll out as a national tour. I think okay. once um, we have a bit more certainty on borders and things like that, we'll definitely yep. be out to see everyone at some stage. And it's a really entertaining show. So um, there's Lionel Richie, Rod Stewart, um, Elton John and Olivia. And it is an absolute hoot of a show. So... Um, if you guys see it uh, advertised and you want to come along, yep. please do and please come and say hello because, um, yeah, you'll be singing and dancing um, <laughs> all night. Like it's, it, it is um, it's really good fun. I have no doubt with that sort of uh, those icons you mentioned. It was that's a given. I feel. And so, oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> so are you you doing her classics? You know, you're doing physical and Xanadu. Yep. What about some of her early country stuff? There's I do. I honestly love you. Yeah. Um, which was a huge hit for Livy, and she released it twice actually. Um, and I, what other songs am I doing? Some songs from Greece, and yeah, Xanadu, uh, Physical, and Magic. Okay, and, yeah. And I do a, a duet with Elton John, <laughs> and um, with also with Rod Stewart, and um, there are six vocalists in the show and talking about BVs like everyone yep. is an amazing singer so it's it's a very vocal heavy show and um, yeah anyone that comes along will be absolutely treated to a really good night out and that's what we're that's what we're missing we've been missing that good night out for quite some time so that'll be yeah, a good show yeah I to think get the, the actual yeah. um, the promoter put in the um, media release this is a, the musical vaccine we've all been <laughs> waiting for <laughs> Like that's so true. It is Everyone indeed. needs to get out and have a good night out listening to some good music. <laughs> and I think that's what we've been craving as well. And, and we've got rallies overseas, and that's one of the things that they've said to us that because they've been in lockdown for so long, the, oh, the, the thing yeah. that they miss, and apart from going to the pub, but it was yeah. uh, it was just enjoying live music, and and even just as uh, my cousin said to me. I would just love to hear someone busking, just even the bad buskers. I'd settle for a bad busker at the moment because wow. that's how desperate uh, he is just to, to hear live music. So, Well, yeah. do you know what? I think it's a really good thing in a way because um, live music for so long has kind of been dying off a little bit, you know, and mm -hmm. I think uh, if there's anything to be taken out of this is how – spoiled we are when we listen to it you know like it, it's it's a real blessing to have that live energy you know going back and forth and that interaction with the crowd and interaction with the people on stage and um you know yes a few drinks go down as well and there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that and it's just a, it's a good a, a good thing to have in our venues and um I'm, I'm looking like i've actually seen a lot of shows and artists popping up doing tours and that again they're just starting to get out and about again i think it's great it is indeed. What is your favourite all-time song to perform live that you never, ever get tired of? Wow, that's a really interesting question. I, I've, I would have a lot of, of those, actually, but gosh, I, I can't, can't even answer that, um, Clayton. I, there'd be too many, too, too, too many. Um, I do love 
singing uh, the Alana Miles song "Black Velvet." That okay, that is like yes, one of yeah. that's a standard. If I go out and sing um, and do a show, even well, with my original shows, I always throw that one in because I love I love that song and I I really love Elvis and yeah. that song is about Elvis. So it's it's not only a good song but it's also about um, you know him as as an artist mm. as well. So <laughs> I would probably yeah that's I'd say Black Velvet. That's a really good question. Yeah, it's got a <laughs> great groove to it. But just as you were thinking that, I was just sort of wondering if you had, you know, an all-time favourite. Um, what if Olivia was to sing your song "Midnight Train"? How would you feel about that? Um, that like, oh, but, oh my gosh! You've got speechless. Would... I've got you to go quiet. You've that got speechless. Would... That's never happened. <laughs> oh my gosh! That I can't even. I can't even fathom yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be insanely amazing. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Wow. It just made me wonder as I looked at a, a, a picture here of the poster for the show and that, and I just sort of wondered, oh, I wonder what the thought would be. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, it is a, it's a great show. So, yeah, I, I actually did, I just did a post um, last yeah. night on my socials um, with all of the show dates, and there'll be more to come, um, as I said, as people's confidence go up with the borders and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, just, just keep an eye out. It's called Icons in Concert. So if you see it pop up, please come along and have a good night out with us. Oh, I'm sure many will be doing that. No doubt that'll be one thing that they can do. We're all looking forward to getting out. We can get more details too by going to your website, anitaspring.com. Well, Anita, as always, it is fabulous chatting to you. I enjoy the chat. I got you to go quiet. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be treasuring that. <laughs> no. And that's, no, uh, I've never done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I will extract that piece and send it out. I think that'll that'll <laughs> that might that might get me into places I never thought I could get into. But uh, <laughs> you're hilarious. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Clayton. I really appreciate your time. It is an absolute pleasure. We love having you on, Anita. We've got your new song here, ready to go for the flow listeners. I know they're going to love it. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And could you please introduce it for us? Hey guys, this is my new song, Midnight Train, and I, I hope you love it. City lights don't look the same All that glitter reminds me of shame
they don't look the same. Pick myself back up again